Dave Roberts now available. First questions for Milano Rizzo, go ahead. Hi Dave, do you have to manage six as if it is must win or do you have to manage it as if there's a possibility of a game seven? Um, yeah, I, I think, um, obviously, I, I mean, it's not do or die, but I think that just the mindset is we're going to do everything we can to win, um, game six, knowing that we have Walker starting game seven and, um, you know, I, I would, and Julio as well, as far as kind of pitching. So I think outside of Walker and Julio and, and obviously Clayton, you know, everyone else is in play. How long will you let Tony go? Or is it more of, again, just the eye test for tomorrow? Um, yeah, I, I think it's it's more the eye test um, because, you know, he's shown that when he's rolling, he gets lefties, righties out. Um, when he's not, you can see that he's not on point. Um, so with guys behind him, potentially, is certainly helpful. But I think for me, it's just let Tony go until um, – He's not being as effective as, as we feel he should be. How difficult is it to sit around today and wait for tomorrow? You know, it, it's uh, it's actually uh, been okay for me. <laughs> I, I think that just the last couple nights, so to we got a little, we got some rain outside, so just to kind of hunker down a little bit um, is okay. But yeah, to get back out there and play certainly wouldn't be a bad thing. But I think that uh, to take a day of uh, rest to gear up for tomorrow. Uh, it's not terrible either. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. Next question from Dave Vasse. Go ahead. Hi, Dave. Hey, Dave. Just, just curious. I know people have been asking the players whether or not they've thought about what tomorrow might bring for you. I'm curious from your standpoint, you've invested a lot. Have you allowed yourself to see the end game of possibly what could be tomorrow? Um, you know what, it, it, when it does enter, um, I quickly dismiss it. Um, and uh, I'm kind of just, cause it's human nature, but I, I just really don't let my mind go there. Um, I'm kind of just taking today as today as, as an off day. And then, then as the day goes on, I'll start thinking about game six and that's really all I'm thinking about. But, you know, realistically it, it would obviously mean a lot, but I hope we're having this conversation tomorrow night. Is it off the table of consideration to have Austin start behind the plate tomorrow? Uh, not off the table. Um, I'm going to think through um, the lineup, you know, later today and, and uh, certainly not off the table. Thank you. You got it, Dave. Next question is from Jorge Castillo. Go ahead. Dave, have you heard um, from people in the last, I don't know, 12 hours? Have you heard from a lot of people? Um, <clears throat> as far as friends, uh, yes, yes. A lot of friends. What are they saying? Uh, just, uh, wishing me well, uh, standing by my side, like, uh, friends and family do. Did you, uh, I know you mentioned you talked to Dustin after his previous sort of rough outing before last night. Did you talk to Tony as well? Um, I did. I did. I had a good conversation with Tony last night. Yeah. What was that like? Just telling him he's going to start game six and um, uh, we believe in him and uh, just go be Tony Gonsolin and, uh, you know, he's going to help us win a baseball game tomorrow night. And uh, I know last night you said that Walker wasn't considered. Some people are wondering why. Just what, what was the thought process there with not going with Walker on short rest? Um, you, you just – you're putting yourself in a situation where um, after winning a game – to put him in a, in a tougher situation. So um, there's already guaranteed, you know, at worst game seven. So it just doesn't make sense for Walker. He hasn't done it. There's a blister component that we've dealt with that it just brings that more into play without the extra day. So we thought it through. Next question from Bill Plunkett. Go ahead. Hey, just to put it bluntly, is Tony Gonsolin an opener tomorrow or is he a starting pitcher? Tony's a starting pitcher tomorrow. And when you put your plan together for, for 
that game. How much do you hope to get out of him? I, I hope to get five or six innings. That would be great. Um, you know, there's no, there's no, as much bill as people want to say, there's a script, there's the game is plays out. And so um, I'm going to watch and pitch and then we'll see what we do after that. But I do know what guys will be available. Um, so God, I hope he can go. I want him to go as long as he possibly can. That'd be great. <laughs> And when you say the eye test, what kind of things are, are you looking for with Tony to see if he's, you know, at his best or not? I, th I think, um, you know, when his, uh, certainly as everyone says, it's, it's fastball command. Uh, when he can get the fastball, um, when he's missing bats in the zone, uh, the fastball has the life. Um, when his split change is on plate and has the depth, he's synced up and he's, his arm speed is there. Um, and when the breaking ball is, is not being cast. <clears throat> so, so those are certain things. Uh, he's a strong guy. Um, he's got rest. Um, he's got pitches to get left and right out, but that's more of the eye test that I look for. Next question is from John Morosi. Go ahead. Thanks, Dave. Uh, I, I reflect back on, on your year and one of the enduring images is, is the night in San Francisco when your club decided after a lot of conversation to not play and how proud you were of Mookie and Clayton and Kenley uh, that night. I'm wondering just from your standpoint, um, how much reflection you've done as well about, of course, being now a World Series manager and possibly a World Series champion manager, how that influences your, your platform and, and the ways that you can uh, impact socially in, in the months and, and years to come. Yeah, you know, um... I, I think that when you're when you're an athlete, or I can speak for myself, I guess, um, as an athlete, as a, as a baseball manager, um, this is my job. It, it's not who I am, um, but you know, things that have transpired over over recent months has kind of forced, in the best way, uh, for us to kind of come out of our comfort zones and, and who we kind of see ourselves. Um, with the platforms that we have and, and kind of pushing us to kind of share our, our beliefs on what's right and what's wrong. Um, and so to see Clayton, uh, Mookie and, and teammates across the board um, do that and, and to make a stand at United, um, I felt very proud and it just really motivated me to kind of uh, follow them. And yeah, going forward, I, I have no hesitation on, on speaking out on what's right, what I believe is right. Um, so it, it's, this is 2020. It's been a, it's been such a unique year to put it mildly. Um, but I do think that when we look back, there's been, there's going to be a lot of good in some crazy ways that have come out of this. Next question is from Jason Stark. Go ahead. Dave, you know, it's so unusual for a guy like Mookie Betts to get traded. When you first realized that that trade was going to happen or had a chance to happen, did it strike you even then how rare this was that your team was trading for an MVP in his prime? It struck me, uh, Jason, and it just does not happen, um, especially when you're talking about the character of the person um, and, and everything that comes with Mookie Betts. Uh, so all, all that, it just doesn't happen. So yeah, when, when Andrew brought it to me that it might happen, I, I just couldn't believe it. And I was kind of not trying to get too excited, but I, yeah, I mean, so as it happened, Jason, I, I just, the player, what you expect, it just exponentially, um, the, it just, we got to steal. And um, I'm just so grateful that the deal was done uh, because it's not only helping us this year, it's going to help us for the next wave of young players and, and really enhance what we have as a culture going forward. I mean, it's going to affect players that haven't even been drafted by the Dodgers yet. So that's what I'm really excited about as well. Great. Thanks very much. Yeah. Next question is from Pete Abraham. Go ahead. Dave, now that had a chance to manage against Kevin Cash for five games. Um, what maybe have you learned that you didn't know coming into the series about how they play? You know, um, I, I've always admired uh, the way uh, Kevin manages uh, his players. He's a great leader of men. Um, I, I watch their team closely. Um, they play the game the right way. They're grinders. They, they, he balances analytics with, you know, just watching his players, trusting his players. Um, his players are kind of very unselfish. Um, they play the right way. 
I, I just, it's very mirrored uh, the way we kind of look at things, I, I would say, but just have a lot of respect for them. Next question is from Mark Topkin. Go ahead. Hey, Dave. What, uh, what kind of challenge does Blake Snell present based on what you saw the first time? Oh, gosh. Um, many challenges. <laughs> He's a heck of a pitcher. Um, it, it's a plus fastball. Um, he, he really did a nice job the first game that he threw, striking the breaking ball. Um, so he gets left and right out. So he, he's just, he's a really good competitor with, with uh, top end stuff. So we're going to have our hands full. Um, but I like our guy and, uh, I think it's going to be a close game and, you know, the team that gets the big hit makes a big play is going to win. And just a follow up, if I could, they, uh, they've made a season of resiliency of bouncing back. What's the urgency you think to just end this tomorrow for you? Yeah. I mean, the goal is to win tomorrow. Um, so we know that that's a very, very good ball club over there and nothing is going to be handed to us. So yeah, our only focus is to win game six. That's it. Next question is from Mike DiGiovanna. Go ahead. Hey, Dave, there was quite a difference between the Dustin May we saw last night and the one who uh, pitched previously. Um, what was the conversation with him and was his uh, adjustments more mental, mechanical or both? No, Dustin just, I, I just think that he just did a great job of, you know, slowing things down. He, he's a very emotional guy, um, amped up, you know, a super competitor. Um, but in this moment, the adrenaline is already going to be, you don't need to create anymore. Um, so I, I think that just kind of being out on the mound a couple of times in this setting, he kind of tempered a little bit and just executed pitches. And it was really, really fun to watch. And he's definitely available tomorrow night. He'll be available tomorrow night as well. Yes. <clears throat> Next question from Eric Steven. Go ahead. Dave, um, with Tony, you know, going on, I guess, five days rest, is this the most like normal routine he's had in October? And do you think that'll help him tomorrow? It is the most uh, rested, the most routine he's had. And I do think it will help him. And uh, to his credit, he's ne you haven't heard one excuse. Um, he's prepared every time uh, when asked to take the baseball. But this, as far as kind of regimen, the you know best uh, routine he's had leading up to an outing, absolutely. I have another sort of odd question. You, you've been at the same hotel. I don't know if it's 24 or 25 straight days. Do you have like a favorite meal you've had there or has it been kind of repetitive? No, I, I do, Eric. Um, so every morning I go with uh, oatmeal with uh, brown sugar, 2% milk and some berries. Um, I go with uh, three eggs over medium and I go with a side of bacon with a cup of coffee. And that's kind of my go-to every day. And I look forward to it every morning. Next questions from Barry. Trying to ask the last name. <laughs> hey, Dave. Um, normally, when you guys have been in the World Series and you're at home, there would be, you know, Lasorda or Hershiser throwing the first pitch, reminders of the Gibson homer. Um, you don't get that as much here in the bubble, but I wonder, even if your players are not directly affected by 1988, what Hearing about that over the years is like you would have heard that when you were with Boston um, trying to break a long drought. What, what's that environment <laughs> like for a, for a player or a coach? I think it's like, it, it's interesting. It's like um, we've, we've heard it a lot and we've seen a lot of highlights and it's fantastic. But I think that, you know, we want to make our own mark on Dodgers history. Um, so, um, and and the great thing about that is Tommy, um, Gibby, Oral, those guys are all rooting like crazy for us in 2020. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's fantastic, but I do think that we're, we're really focused on trying to make our own mark. Thanks. Yep. Got a question from Emmanuel Campa. Go ahead. Hello, Dave. Uh, it's Julio Abubo for a beer reliever tomorrow, or it's only for a potential game seven? I would say Julio would be available potentially for game seven. Next question is from Dave Lacroix. Go ahead. 
Uh, hey, Dave, uh, we're about to complete a, a postseason where the, the universal DH has uh, been all the way through. And I, I guess I'm just curious, does it feel almost normal now? Uh, and does it feel like maybe not necessarily an inevitability because it has to be approved, but uh, that it's just kind of become a, a way of life at this point? You know what? It, it does. And, uh, you know, I've been familiar with it as far as in interleague um, and it is very normal now. And I've, I was kind of always on the other side of that, um, you know, being a traditional National League pitcher hit. But, you know, I, I actually have grown, I've warmed up to it. So um, I understand that it's probably not going to be in play next year. But going forward, I, I think from 22 on, I would, I'm, I flipped. I like the DH. And how much? Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. How much have you enjoyed it as a tool with the, the roster you currently have, just with uh, dropping Will in there so Austin can catch? Or with yeah, and I think it's just I, I just really like it because you know as far as this format where we were playing five games in a row in, in the in the DS and then seven games in a row, you can kind of uh, you know put it put the catcher in there, uh, change catcher, and then also on in the outfield. You know, there's a that playing on turf here. Um, beat your body up so then to kind of get Pollock a, a day or, or you know whoever jock a day to DH so it just kind of gives you a little bit more flexibility and I think the fans enjoy having that hitter in there as well. One other question from Jorge go ahead. Hey two more for me just first uh, how did Cody come out last night I know you made that really nice catch in the eighth inning how did he come out with the back stuff? Uh, you know what um, the back came out great um, the back didn't really uh, bother him last night. Didn't affect him at all. So I, I think that we came out of it as good as we could have expected. And yeah, what a play! Um, what a play he made last night. It shouldn't go unnoticed, certainly. And just lastly, do you guys have any sort of team activity scheduled today, tonight? Um, anything at the hotel in the bubble? I, I think the only thing we got going um, is uh, there's a uh, we got barbecue ordered. So uh, people are, are excited about barbecue coming in into the bubble. Um, and, uh, I think there's a little, um, wedding thing for Bruce Dar's, uh, fiance, Allison, that the wives are doing a great thing for. And then I have time for one more. Go ahead, Alana. Dave, as you work your way through your lineup this afternoon, if Austin is chosen to catch tomorrow, would you consider Edwin as the DH over Will? Um... I don't think it would be uh, Edwin because of Snell throwing, um, and, and he's really been tough on lefties. Um, so I, I probably wouldn't have Edwin. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, guys.